Hey guys, so I'm coming back at ya with some good stuff, some solid scriptures, and um, I've got my monster shirt on. <laughs> it's at a Target, and I just thought it was really cute. Um, but yeah, I love fall. I'm super excited and loving the cooler air here. Um, going outside, going for more hikes, and just enjoying God's creation. And actually, when I was out hiking yesterday, I saw a, a comment um, on one of my recent YouTube videos where someone said, um, I really want to get right with God, but I don't know how. And I was so excited. I was like, this is amazing. This is why I'm doing this. You know, I don't mind at all preaching to the choir. Like us saved people, we still need encouragement, right? But if someone who doesn't know the Lord or whatever finds these videos and watches them and feels the Holy Spirit and begins that um, salvation journey because of, of the Lord using these videos, that's amazing. So I want to do a super, super deep dive today. I found a bunch of scriptures. We're going to talk about how exactly you can know that you are saved and that you are ready for the rapture <laughs> guys because it is so close i mean mm -hmm. like honestly i don't even know if we're gonna make it through this month um and i know a lot of people who have the holy spirit are feeling that way too that things are culminating things are converging and everything is the pot's ready to boil over right and we know that as soon as the rapture happens we hear that trumpet we go and meet the lord in the air all hell is going to break loose here on earth and we see that that trigger is already loaded right the safety's off the whole thing's ready to blow i kind of think about it as like a big old kettle that's been filled up with fireworks and someone's lighting a fire underneath it and it's just starting to heat and you're just starting to hear like pops and snapples and all that well the whole thing's gonna explode and um thankfully if you are right with the lord you're going to be taken home because you're going to be part of his bride and we're going to make sure that you know for certain that you are ready to go because this is the absolute most important critical thing to address right now your eternal destination so i'm going to kick this off because it's such a great scripture from ephesians 2 and it's 4 through 10 says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might display the surpassing riches of his grace, demonstrated by his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. So guys, that's just so 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 critically important that we are saved by grace through faith it's like jesus already paid the price for our sins he died he said on the cross it is finished 
And all we have to do is put our trust in him. That's the faith part. And that, that um, is transferred to our account where we know that right now at this very moment, Satan is, he's before the throne of God and it says he accuses the, the brethren before, before the throne. And there's also someone else before the throne and that's Jesus Christ and he is, he is defending us. He is our defender. And the instant you put your faith in what he accomplished on the cross, you are declared not guilty. So whatever you have done in your life, and Satan will bring it back up, Jesus will say, not guilty. That debt I've already paid, it's done, it's gone, boom. And the Bible in another part says that as far as the East is from the West. And I'm thinking like probably the whole galaxy here, right? Because God is not limited by planet Earth, but that is how far God removes our sins from us. And he throws them into the, the metaphorical sea of forgetfulness. Like he remembers them no more. He doesn't even think about them like it's done. So salvation is a gift and we receive it. We receive it by faith. We just put our, we put our trust in him. Um, the works that God requires are just to believe. And I'm going to elaborate on from that. If you've ever heard of someone being a born again Christian, that is actually biblical. It's from the book of John when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, who was uh, no dummy, but he, he knew Jesus was sent by God and he wanted to understand this because guys, this was brand new to them, right? The Jewish people have been like so steeped in their laws and their traditions and he's just like, you know, like, what, what are we, what are we talking about here, Jesus? And Jesus is explaining to him and also to us, everyone else who would read this. He says, truly, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh is born of flesh, but the spirit is born of the spirit. Do not be amazed that I said, you must be born again. And so that is that moment in time when you have put your faith in Christ and he sends his Holy Spirit to dwell inside of you. And that is that point where you are born again. You are, you are made a new creature in Christ. You are, you are God's workmanship at that point. And I love this verse from the Old Testament, Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. He promised in advance. He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So that was a big part of what Jesus was doing here on earth, right? And he told his disciples when he was, you know, he knew he was going to the cross. They didn't, he was, he was their friend. They didn't want to lose him. But Jesus said, guys, you know, unless I go, um, I can't send the comforter to you, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, on, when he was on earth, he was one person, just very bound by that. The Holy Spirit can be everywhere. It can live in every single believer, and it does. It's not limited the way that Jesus was in his earthly ministry. And um, not only that, but the Holy Spirit, it changes us from the inside out. It's that spring of like life-giving waters. And you know, the Bible also says, though, outwardly, every day we are, we are wasting away. Inwardly, every day we're being renewed by the Spirit, the fresh mercies of God. That's our direct line, our direct connection to God. It's our gift. And it's also our promise, our seal. The Bible d describes the Holy Spirit as being like, um, like a down payment that we know 
We have the Spirit of God in us. We know we are saved. We know we belong to God because He's actually put a piece of Himself inside of us. And like how, how amazing is that? And not only that, but it is virtually impossible to live the Christian life apart from the, the help, the enabling of the Holy Spirit. We just can't do it in our flesh. And, you know, the Bible says that all of our, our best righteous deeds are like filthy rags. And when Jesus gave his Sermon on the Mount and he gave the, the part about the Beatitudes, it's like he set the bar so impossibly high that it's like no one, absolutely no one, could fulfill his standard of righteousness except for him. And so he knows we can't do it, so he sends the Holy Spirit, that's our helper, that helps us to be able to live every single day over our flesh. So that's why I'm just always, always talking about the Holy Spirit, guys, and it's it's real it's um something that you can absolutely feel though you might not have a strong really emotional conversion experience and that's okay but you definitely want to be interacting with god feeling his presence with you um you know i remember one time i was in a church where they were like they were super into speaking in tongues and that's fine, but that's just one aspect of the Holy Spirit. And I will say that I do speak in tongues um, when I feel led to, mostly privately. But it's not a it's not a sign that you're saved. A lot of people have the Holy Spirit in them, and they don't they don't speak in tongues, and that's totally fine. There's a lot of gifts of the Spirit, and speaking in tongues is just one of them. But you know that you have the Spirit in you if you feel that that guidance within you, like don't do that, you know, or do that. Or um, if you do do the thing you're not supposed to do, you're going to feel guilty about it because that's your new, your new nature inside of you. And you know that you have grieved the Holy Spirit that lives within you. You are now the temple of God and no profane thing can exist in the temple of God and you can be okay with it. And that's just the way it is. Um, so I also wanted to get into the really touchy subject of um, can you lose your salvation? And I have put so much like thought in seeking into this and I will be completely honest and say I don't know I don't know I have personally seen people who were spirit-filled Christians who had that evidence of life change and the joy and all of that I have seen them become disillusioned and walk away and completely turn away from their faith and would I say that those people are still saved um no I wouldn't because um they turned away right um and then there's another there's a verse that I thought about that we have to consider guys and this one is from Revelation 3 5 and Jesus is speaking and he says, the one who is victorious will, like them, and he's speaking of the people of Sardis, the church of Sardis here, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. And so the fact that he's saying, if you are victorious, you won't have your name blotted out. I'm thinking that if you fall away, you could have your name blotted out. And I'm just trying to be honest with you guys. From what I see from scripture, because 
I know this is a really controversial topic and I've listened to a ton of people that I really respect. I, you know, I know that they're super well-meaning, but a lot of people think they really, they really push hard the once saved, always saved thing. And I really hope that's the case. I really hope, but guys, we have to take in the full account of scripture. We can't just, and we have to, we have to honestly warn people. And then, you know, on the other side of the spectrum, there's the people that get a really, really ugly Pharisee type spirit where they're like, just super legalistic and if you're not living your life perfectly you're not saved and and I'm like that is super wrong so wrong I'm just like goodness gracious you know there's another verse that says um the letter kills but the spirit gives life and the letter that being the law like Jesus came he fulfilled the law for us so we could be set free from the law and we can live according to the Holy Spirit. So if we are being led by the Holy Spirit, we're not under any law at that point. The only debt we have is just to love. And the Bible says that. So if you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are sensitive to where God is leading you, He, obviously the Holy Spirit, is never going to lead you to sin right so there is so much freedom in that and we're supposed to live free and if we do something that's wrong the holy spirit will tell us right away and we can repent and get back in right standing with god um and um you know another verse that it's not a verse it's really like a whole chunk um a parable but jesus told his disciples and his followers, the parable about the seed. The seed is the word of God. It's, it's the salvation message and how it was scattered, scattered freely, right? And it fell on four different kinds of soil. And the types of soil represent the heart of the person that's hearing the word of God. And um, I'm going to read through this just because it's really good still obviously very applicable to today, but Jesus says in Mark 4, from 14 to 20, the farmer sows the, sows the word. Some are like the seeds along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes that word that was sown in them. Some are like the seeds sown on the rocky ground they hear the word and at once receive it with joy but they themselves have no root and they remain only for a season when trouble or persecution comes because of the word they quickly fall away others are like the seeds sown among the thorns they hear the word but the worries of this life the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Still, others are like the seeds sown on good soil. They hear the word, receive it, and produce a crop, 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. And so again there, it seems to suggest that for the word, the seed, the seed word that falls on the shallow soil, they receive it with joy and their little plant springs up quickly. But because their faith is shallow, when the hard things come, they fall away, right? They're, they're just, they, they're really excited. They receive it with joy, but they fall away. And I think that you could theoretically say those are people who go to like a big crusade or they, you know, they go to a church service and they feel the Holy Spirit. They cry, they go up to the altar call, they want to receive Jesus and they have that big experience, but you know, it 
doesn't go anywhere or it doesn't last. And there are definitely people like that. And can we say they were never saved? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Only God knows our hearts, but we want to be like the good soil, the soil that perseveres, that stands the test of time. And I'll go on to read a verse that goes with that really well from John 15, 2 through 4. He, God, cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you just as no branch can bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And there is really so much in there and it's, it's a really strong warning. Um, you know, God's lopping off the branches that are just sitting there <laughs> taking up space and um, it kind of reminds me of that other verse from Revelation where Jesus warns that you know I wish you were either hot or cold but because you're lukewarm I will spew you out of my mouth and this is suggesting that there is a responsibility on our part that we need to remain in Christ we need to abide and he will let those seasons of pruning come because we are all a work in progress right and the pruning can feel really painful and people um I think I know people fallen away from that too where they want the Christian life to be a cakewalk you know, your best life now, or God's just the cosmic genie in the sky, you know, almost like trying to remake God in their own image. And you guys have to realize that at the end of the day, God is God and he will allow things in our lives that are painful and test us and try us and sometimes stretch us to our very limit that's the pruning and it's only by going through going through those things and holding on to Christ and going through the fire is how he he purifies and cleanses us and makes us more productive that's the pruning and that is a normal part of Christianity just because God's allowing painful hard hard things in your life it does not mean that he doesn't love you it means that he loves you a lot almost like you know the more he loves you the more you're gonna go through just like job just like um daniel just like um you know jacob who went through so much but it was all for god to prepare him for this super high anointed calling in his life and he needed that to develop his character and make him strong and so God's investing in you and it's a little bit of a boot camp and um that should be expected and there's also another part where Jesus says that you know all who God receives as a son he chastises he disciplines and if you're not going through some sort of chastening in your life you're probably not actually a son of God so there is that um, and I'm gonna go on to read a passage from Luke 21 34 through 36 and it says but watch yourselves or your hearts will be weighed down by dissipation, drunkenness, and the worries of life. 
and that day will spring upon you suddenly like a snare. For it, the coming day of the Lord, will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. And guys, that's another really loaded <laughs> um, passage there. But again, there's this responsibility on our parts that if we let, you know, the weeds of life, the rocks in our soil, we let these things choke out the word of God in our lives, we're not going to be ready, right? Like, I mean, in my own life, I was just talking to a friend last night about people we've watched who at one time were really strong in their faith and they've gotten pulled away. They've gotten really into other things that are really just temporal earthly things. And because they're so focused on these distractions, they are completely oblivious to the days that we're living and what's really going on. And for people like that, who have left their first love, Jesus, and are have been pulled away by the cares of life or hobbies or whatever, this day is going to come on them like a snare, like a snare. So... I mean, that is a really stern warning and I feel a responsibility to tell you guys that we have this responsibility that we are supposed to be on the watch. We are supposed to be praying. You know, honestly, guys, I pray every single day for myself and my loved ones that we would be counted worthy to escape everything that is coming. And that is biblical. I mean, this stuff is serious. And we just need to have all of this, all of the, the T's crossed and the I's dotted. This is not something we want to mess around with. Again, I have to walk this line so carefully that we are saved by grace, right? We are saved by putting on the righteousness of Christ Jesus. But, you know, if we ignore such a salvation, such as this, the consequences are incredible like the bible describes god as a consuming fire and it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living god we're not playing around here guys we're not pretending we are not playing church all this stuff is real there are two places you're gonna go you could go to for all of eternity you have an eternal soul that will never die and Jesus has made a way. It's the only way. He is the door. He is the truth and the life. And that is why you need to have Jesus in your life. Jesus literally inside of you in your heart. And you need to be doing your part, which is just staying, abiding in him. Like we're not earning our salvation. We're abiding we're staying in relationship it is it really is about relationship and in the um another parable let's see if i can open it oh, i don't know if i can open it um yeah here we go so matthew 25 the parable of the ten virgins you know, the virgins that got shut out of the wedding feast, aka didn't make it in the rapture. The Bible says they were foolish. They didn't take enough oil. They didn't take any extra oil with them in their lamps. And it says that the bridegroom was long in coming. It's been 2,000 years. They all became drowsy and fell asleep. And guys, that's most of the church right now. They are asleep. They have no idea what's really going on. But at midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on the way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. And guys, that's just so sad. Even just reading that, it just breaks my heart that the people who are asleep, who have not made themselves ready, um, they're, I mean, I don't know how you could read that and not think that Jesus was being really clear they're not going to make the rapture. They're going to have to go into the tribulation and deal with the horrors that are going to unfold. And that is why, guys, it is so critical that you are abiding in Christ and you have that relationship with them. He said, I don't know you. So, guys, you need to know him and have that relationship with him. Another great verse with um, dealing with salvation is Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and these are the heroes of faith that have gone on before us, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with endurance the race set out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So guys, we wanna just throw off everything all the distractions, anything that would take our focus off of Christ. We need to keep our eyes fixed on him. We need to run a race. And that is the only way we're going to be victorious, guys, because we're not playing here. Again, this is your eternity. And this is the word of God, which is the truth. Um... And again, another really great verse, Philippians 2, 12 through 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So again, guys, that's both elements right here, it's, it's um, our participation where we keep showing up, we're working on our salvation. But again, it's actually God who is doing the work in us. He's working in us the will to obey him, even the ability, because on our own, we just don't have it, right? So I... um. That was a lot, guys. If you're still here, you rock. You're awesome. I just really, really wanted to make sure that we took a deep dive into scripture so you can have the full assurance that you are saved. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Um, if you have any questions at all or comments, you know, just comment below and I will get back to you. I will pray with you. And um, you know what? Like, guys, God is so good. All of this. I just want to finish this up just with just the grace of God 
It's his kindness that leads us to repentance. He is so good. And just like any, if you had this, this earthly father who was so loving and amazing to you, you would want to spend time with him, right? You want to have that relationship with him. And it's exactly like that. Like, um, you know, all my life, I, um, I've had times where I walked really closely with God and times that I went my own way. And, you know, the further you get away from God, you just get emptier and emptier and you get so deceived. You know, we, I've heard the human heart is an idol making factory. And it's so true. We, we either worship ourselves, we worship celebrities, we worship money, we worship all these things that are so unworthy. We're, we're made to worship and we're going to worship something. We need to be worshiping God, fixing our eyes on Jesus, or we're going to fall into a ditch and um, jeopardize our eternity. And, you know... Um, we want to finish our race well so we can stand before the throne of God and we can see Jesus face to face and not be ashamed and know that we we used our talents for him. We did what we could. You know, I'm an introvert. It's hard for me sometimes to get out of my little shell and talk to people, but I can make YouTube videos and that's what I'm doing. And um, I mean, you have gifts from God too that you can use not to earn your salvation, but definitely to please your Heavenly Father. And hopefully we can get more people into the kingdom. And that is why we are literally still here, is to spread the message of Christ, the gospel, while we still can. And also, guys, you know, everything you do, everything you do for God will last. You know, even the Bible says even a cup of cold water given in His name will earn you a reward, a reward in heaven. So where we're going, it's going to be beyond amazing. And even if you were saved at the last second on your deathbed, you're just going to be um, like overjoyed to be in heaven, right? But the people who have been really faithful, who have persevered and have let the Spirit of Christ work through them, they're going to have so many rewards. And best of all, they're going to get to stand before Jesus and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And you will know in that moment that that is the only thing that matters. That's why you're here. Um, Jesus gave it all for you on the cross. And he expects us to be willing be willing to give it all for him too. And that is really where we find life. So, all right, guys, I love you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you later. Bye.